Thank you, Mr. Nixon. That completes the opening statements, and now the candidates will answer questions or comment upon one another's answers to questions put by correspondents of the networks. The correspondents. I'm Sander Van Oker, NBC News. I'm Charles Warren, Mutual News. I'm Stuart Novin, CBS News. Bob Fleming, ABC News. The first question to Senator Kennedy from Mr. Fleming. Senator, the vice president in his campaign has said that you are naive and at times immature. He has raised the question of leadership. On this issue, why do you think people should vote for you rather than the vice president? Well, the vice president and I came to the Congress together, 1946. We both served in the Labor Committee. I've been there now for 14 years, the same period of time that he has. So that our experience in uh, government is comparable. Secondly, I think the question is, uh, what are the programs that we advocate? What is the party record that we lead? I come out of the Democratic Party, which in this century has produced Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman, and which supported and sustained these programs which I've discussed tonight. Mr. Nixon comes out of the Republican Party. He was nominated by it. And it is a fact that through most of these last 25 years, the Republican leadership has opposed federal aid for education, medical care for the aged, development of the Tennessee Valley, development of our natural resources. I think Mr. Nixon is an effective leader of his party. I hope he would grant me the same. The question before us is, which point of view and which party do we want to lead the United States? Mr. Nixon, would you like to comment on that statement? I have no comment. The next question to Vice President Nixon from Mr. Van Oker. Uh, Mr. Vice President, since the question of executive leadership is a very important campaign issue, I'd like to follow Mr. Novin's question. Now, Republican campaign slogans, you'll see them on signs around the country, as we did last week, say, it's experience that counts. That's over a picture of yourself, sir. Uh, implying that you've had more governmental executive decision-making uh, experience than uh, your opponent. Now, in his news conference on August 24th, President Eisenhower was asked to give one example of a major idea of yours that he adopted. His reply was, and I'm quoting, if you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. Now, that was a month ago, sir, and the president hasn't brought it up since. And I'm wondering, sir, if you can clarify which version is correct, the one put out by Republican campaign leaders or the one put out by President Eisenhower? Well, I would suggest, Mr. Van Oker, that uh, if you know the president, that was probably a facetious remark. Uh, I would also suggest that insofar as his statement is concerned, that I think it would be improper for the president of the United States to disclose uh, the instances in which members of his official family had made recommendations, as I have made them through the years, to him which he has accepted or rejected. The president has always maintained, and very properly so, that he is entitled to get what advice he wants from his cabinet and from his other advisors without disclosing that to anybody, including, as a matter of fact, the Congress. Now, I can only say this. Through the years, I have sat in the National Security Council. I have been in the cabinet. I have met with the legislative leaders. I have met with the president when he made the great decisions with regard to Lebanon, Kimoy Matsu, other matters. The president has asked for my advice. I have given it. Sometimes my advice has been taken. Sometimes it is not. I do not say that I have made the decisions. And I would say that no president should ever allow anybody else to make the major decisions. The president only makes the decisions. All that his advisors do is to give counsel when he asks for it. As far as what experience counts and whether that is experience that counts, that isn't for me to say. Uh, I can only say that my experience is there for the people to consider. Senator Kennedy's is there for the people to consider. As he pointed out, we came to the Congress in the same year. His experience has been different from mine. Mine has been in the executive branch. His has been in the legislative branch. I would say that the people now have the opportunity to evaluate his as against mine, and I think both he and I are going to abide by whatever the people decide. Senator Kennedy? Well, I'll just say that the question is of experience. And the question also is uh, what our judgment is of the future and what our goals are for the United States and what ability we have to implement those goals. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln came to the presidency in 1860 after a rather little-known session in the House of Representatives and after being defeated for the Senate in 58 and was a distinguished president. There is no certain road to the presidency. There are no guarantees 
that uh, if you take uh, one road or another, that you will be a successful president. I have been in the Congress for 14 years. I have voted in the last uh, eight years. Uh, and the Vice President was uh, presiding over the Senate and meeting his other responsibilities. I have met uh, decisions over 800 times on matters which affect not only the domestic security of the United States, but as a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The question really is, which candidate and which party can meet the problems that the United States is going to face in the 60s? Mr. Van Oker's question for Vice President Nixon. Mr. Vice President, uh, in one of your earlier statements, you said, we've moved ahead, we've built more schools, we've built more hospitals. Now, sir, isn't it true that the building of more schools is a local matter for financing? Uh, were you claiming that the Eisenhower administration was responsible for the building of these schools, or is it the local school districts that provide for them? Not at all. As a matter of fact, your question brings out a point that I'm very glad to make. Too often, in appraising whether we are moving ahead or not, we think only of what the federal government is doing. Now, that isn't the test of whether America moves. The test of whether America moves is whether the federal government, plus the state government, plus the local government, plus the biggest segment of all, individual enterprise, moves. We have, for example, a gross national product of approximately $500 billion. Roughly $100 billion to $100.25 billion of that is the result of government activity. $400 billion, approximately, is a result of what individuals do. Now, the reason the Eisenhower administration has moved, the reason that we've had the funds, for example, locally, to build the schools and the hospitals and the highways to make the progress that we have, is because this administration has encouraged individual enterprise. And it has resulted in the greatest expansion of the private sector of the economy that has ever been witnessed in an eight-year period. And that is growth. That is the growth that we are looking for. It is the growth that this administration has supported and that its policies have stimulated. Senator Kennedy? Well, I must say, I think the reason that the schools have been constructed is because the local school districts were willing to increase the property taxes to a tremendously high figure, and in my opinion, almost to the point of diminishing returns in order to sustain these schools. Secondly, I think we have a richer uh, country, and I think we have a powerful country. I think what we have to do, however, is have the president and the leadership set before our country exactly what we must do in the next decade if we're going to maintain our security in education, in economic growth, in development of natural resources. The Soviet Union is making great gains. It isn't enough to compare what might have been done eight years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago. I want to compare what we're doing with what our adversaries are doing so that by the year 1970, the United States is ahead in education, in health, in building, in homes, in economic strength. I think that's the big assignment, the big task, the big function of the federal government.